Hi everyone, Amy here. Today I'm going to do some no heat foiling with alcohol inks and I have no idea when I'm doing this how it's going to turn out. I have this titanium colored foil, I have this roll of adhesive from scrapbook.com and some 85 pound Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock and yeah this is a lot of trial and error. I'm going to show you a couple photos here of a couple of the cards um, that I'm going to make. Here's the first one. This is actually on foil. At first glance it might look like it's on white cardstock, but it's actually on that titanium foil. And then this one is on white cardstock. And do stick around. I'll show you a photo of a third card that I'm going to make as well, um, closer to the end. But I'm bas basically going to unroll this um, big roll of adhesive and I cut my cardstock actually down so that it's the same width. I have the six inch roll which honestly I don't find to be ideal. I think if I were to, if I ever get through this roll, I'll probably order maybe like a four inch because I think it'll just work better for my um, purposes on card bases. But um, basically I just covered this entire piece of 85 pound cardstock just pulling some of the backer um, away and then I'm going to line it up with this titanium foil. Now I haven't done a full sheet of this. I'm not entirely sure um, how it's going to work out, but ultimately I want to do this um, to, you know, use up some of my foil without heat, so without a laminator, um, and also to try alcohol ink on it. So I haven't done this before. I don't know if it's going to work. I'm just trying to push out some of the bubbles. I end up getting this spreader tool just to really kind of um, lay it down flat. Now, I do realize once I pull it back here that I am kind of marring the surface. And you'll see there's some spots here in just a moment that don't actually um, have the foil on them. So I do come back with that little bit of edge and kind of fill in. There I am in the reflection. Hi. <laughs> um, but I basically kind of just use the little extra uh, bits around the edge of that plastic and just fill in these little exposed adhesive bits. But um, so it's not a smooth transfer. It's not ideal, but I know with the way that I'm going to use it, uh, I don't think that it's going to matter. So I'm trucking along ahead. And again, you might be able to do this with um, just straight up metallic cardstock, but I have so much foil and I have foil in different colors that I wouldn't have uh, metallic cardstock. So I just thought, hey, let's just use what you have and play around and see what you can do with it. So I have some alcohol ink blending solution. I have my little Tim Holtz puffer tool. I don't know what it's called. Um, and I have a bunch of my alcohol inks and some handy dandy stained blue gloves. Um, and I'm just going to go to town and see if this works on top of this foil. Now this is the foil with the plastic bit removed. Um, so if you do this again, make sure you pull the foil plastic part back to expose the actual foil. Um, but basically the way that I like to alcohol ink is by laying down this blending solution first and then just dropping down the alcohol ink and then kind of blowing it side to side like I'm doing with this puffer tool. Um, I like to go diagonally across the composition. Obviously you can fill the whole thing, um, but I'm really liking how this looks. Now, you can see the panel is a little bit sticky. I don't know if that's just because of the foil or little bits of the adhesive popping through, but guys, I'm seriously winging it. I've never done this. I don't know if it's going to work, so <laughs> this is a trial and error for you guys um, to kind of see if, if you can combine your products in this way. So uh, once I'm done becoming one with this panel here, uh, I decided to move on to the next one, and I'm going to do the same thing and lay down some more of the blending solution and then I have a couple more colors that I want to play with for this panel. Now those panels I did cut down um, because I knew I wanted to attach them to a card base and I wanted there to be a white border so those are probably cut down maybe a half an inch from a two size. So I'm starting in with this really pretty purple color um, and then I think I come in with like a gray, I think it might be slate, but I will link all the products that I used in the video description box below. Um, if you expand that area and scroll down, you will find all the links. And if you guys do follow any of my affiliate links, it won't be any additional charge to you, but it does really help me out 
um, and helps support my channel so I can keep, you know, trying these things out and making these videos for you. So I really appreciate that. Um, but basically I'm doing the same thing here. I don't really have the video sped up too much. I have it sped up a little bit, but um, I want you guys to really see my process and how I play with alcohol inks because I know it took me quite a while playing with them to kind of get that ethereal whimsy style that that I wanted. So this is the way that works well for me. I'm just showing you the colors that I use here. Um, but again, I will link those below for you. So I, I was a little nervous. I did come back in and add some more splotches to this one. I wanted to make it a little bit more rainbow looking. Um, but it did take longer to dry on the foil. So I will make that mention. Um, so if you're doing it on Yupo paper or like poster board like I like to do, uh, it does take a little bit longer to dry on this sort of application. So bear that in mind. Now here's another thing I want to try. Again, I have no idea if it's going to work. Um, and this is a little bit sticky, partially I think from, I don't know, just the process and maybe the alcohol ink, but I'm like, I want to emboss this. And as you can see, it is stuck in there. Um, thankfully, it didn't mess it up, but I did have to pull it out slowly. Um, and wow, look at that. Isn't that so cool? It looks like an actual piece of metal to me, and I love the purple on it. So I did get a little bit of extra um, alcohol ink. That is 90% or 91% alcohol that I just sprayed uh, right in the embossing folder and on my desk. And that's the way I like to clean it up. It'll just get rid of it. No issues, doesn't damage or stain. Um, the embossing folder at all. Now I have another all to new product here. This is um, some alphabet dies and I decided I want to cut right into the middle of this panel and you're going to see <laughs> lots more mishaps in a moment here and mistakes um, but I still kept going with it and I'm going to show you what I learned as I went. Um, so I'm just lining up these two letters the H and I in the center of this panel as best as I can and I'm going to use a low tack tape just to kind of hold those in place. I was a little nervous doing the low tack tape um, and running this through the die cutting machine because I was nervous it was going to leave indentations um, from the tape. You'll see in a moment here uh, once I come back from running it off screen. I did actually put this little piece of scratch paper on top of it as I ran it through the die cutting machine because I didn't want any marring from my plates. And you can see it stuck and totally made the foil a different texture and then put that line on the side where the paper didn't touch. So it did definitely affect the texture and the paneling, but thankfully it was just that little strip. So I was able to trim the panel down a little bit smaller. Um, so you can see that mistake is gone. So it does have texture now from that piece of white paper that I covered it up with and also some lines from the tape. So bear that in mind. If you want a perfect finish, uh, this may not be the right time. With this design, it didn't matter. Um, I did want to get rid of the stick though. So I have my embossing tool here. This is a really cool embossing tool from the Rabbit Hole Designs. It helps um, with static when you're embossing, but I thought, hey, maybe I can deactivate some of the stick uh, from the embossing powder with this method. So I'm just kind of putting it on and then wiping it off with my paper towel. Looks like a little bit of purple came off, um, but here, wow, going a little crazy, <laughs> messing up my panel. I don't know why I'm so rough sometimes. I just, I don't even think. I just get in the mode and then rush along and mess stuff up. Anyway, um, got it figured out using the paper towel more gently now uh, to wipe off that powder. And then I decide to run another panel um, of cardstock spritzed with water through this other embossing um, folder from Altenew. It is like a wood planks texture. So I'm gonna use the very colorful letters uh, with this background. Uh, on this panel. So I decided I want to pop up these foam and alcohol inked letters. So I decided to take a scrap piece of my adhesive backed foam. I'll link that as well below um, and use the same dies to run it through my die cutting machine to give those two letters a little bit more wow factor. So they will have that cool pretty blue foam color on the side if you look at the card from the side and it'll also give it nice even dimension to kind of pop up those letters on the front of the card. So I'm using my Barely Arts liquid glue with the fine tip just to kind of add some liquid glue onto these foam pieces and then I'm going to attach these little die cut um, foiled and alcohol inked letters on top of it. So this one I put down backwards initially, you could see the blue poking out um, 
so I just flip that around and then put a little acrylic block on them just to sit on them and kind of hold them in place while the, the glue gets a little bit stickier. So now I'm just going to assemble the card. I have a, a simple strip from Tailored Expressions. It says I miss your face and I have these little mini foam strips um, that I also get from Amazon. So I'm just kind of using my T-square ruler just to make sure this is straight and then realize eh, it was a little too high up in the composition. So I carefully pull it up and then move it down farther on the card base. And then basically I could just remove the backer on this foam and I have two glorified stickers. So here's a photo of the other card. Thanks for sticking around this far. This one turned out really super cool. I'm really pleased with it. But um, here are the finished cards. I just basically assembled them off screen because, you know, you guys get the gist. And this one is just the actual letters from the one panel. You can see the blue foam on the side with that nice clean and simple texture from the embossing folder. This one this might be my favorite, honestly, because it's just such a cool rainbow. And all the little texture and mistakes that I got along the way, I feel like they just added to the design. And those are two more uh, simple strips, or actually one simple strip that I cut down from Tailored Expressions. And then this, I just put a simple happy birthday die cut. So thanks so much for <laughs> going on this journey with me. I really wasn't sure if it was going to work. So um, my opinion is, yeah, assuming... Um, Perfection is not the name of the game. This technique might be a great way for you to use your foil, uh, especially if you don't want to use a laminator or any of the gel mediums. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing and I'll check you next time. Bye.